so I'll record now. So tonight we're going to talk about your why and your story and why it's so important to have that. So when I first started, my why, I was working a job that I absolutely hated. I was working at a place I didn't like. And I just needed something that was going to fulfill me with purpose. I was just completely drained. I was 28, absolutely burnt out. And I knew I needed something different. Um, and at the time, me and my boyfriend, now husband, we were traveling two hours on the weekend, every single weekend, for three years because I couldn't find a job down there. He couldn't find a job by me. And so that's what we did. That's what we had to do. And I was... I was getting to my wit's end. We almost had to, you know, call it quits because we're like, how long are we literally going to do this for? Um, so I knew I needed to make a change. With that and obviously with my health and fitness as well, but me and Dave being together became my why. That was my driving force even when nobody joined my challenge group or everybody was saying no. I knew I'm still going to do this because I needed something for us to be together. I needed this to work. And when I like directly didn't say, like, it didn't happen like how I left my job, but I found Jessica Bryson. I don't know if you guys heard this story before, but I met her at Lululemon one random day. I never knew who she, you know, just she was working there and I was trying on clothes. And we were just talking, and I don't know, she started talking to Dave when I was in the dressing room, and Dave was like, yeah, she's trying to find a job over here by me. Make a long story short, Jessica ended up getting the ultimate reset, got amazing results. She became a coach, and her dad actually knew an athletic director at a high school where Dave, near where Dave was living, and I got the job. So she became a coach. I got a job that helped me you know, move in together, and then we got married, and now I'm quitting. So it finally, you know, everything kind of kind of worked out, maybe not in order, but, um, you know, me and Dave finally becoming, you know, getting married, that was my first why. Because it's going to change, you know, because you're going to hit that why. And then after that, it was for me to leave my full-time job. And I'm hitting that. I already, you know, gave my resignation and hopefully mid-October when my 60 days are up, I'm out of there. Um, and my why after that is for Dave to leave his full-time job. So I got some awesome goals ahead of me. And I know that no matter what happens, no matter... If anybody quits or how many no's I get, I'm still going to keep pushing because I want to bring Dave home because that's my ultimate thing is just to have my family where we're together, not where they're always waiting good goodbye to their dad, but for us to be doing things as a family and not having to feel that struggle or that pressure that I know I felt when we were growing up as kids and worrying about money like, I remember being, I don't know, maybe like 10, and my parents just fighting about money and like just bills. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, it's just like, what do I do? And I never want to put my kid in that situation where they're feeling like they need to, you know, figure it out for us. Obviously, I, I didn't at 10 years old, but I don't think that's a burden I would ever want to put on my kids. So that is my why going forward. And my story, your story is something that you really want to be able to just spew out whenever anybody asks you, you know, about Beachbody or why you became a coach. Um, and I pretty much say the same thing every single time. I say it on all of the coach webinars. I say it on any team calls that I'm like, um, I guess, speaker on. I say it when anybody asks me about it. And I share bits and pieces of my story on Facebook, you know, not all at, war uh, uh, not all at once, um, but just giving people like little bits of information. That way they can, they're following, you know, 
and they're not just like, oh my God, I have to read this big long thing. Yeah, last week I did do a big long thing because damn, I freaking earned that. <laughs> um, but you just want to, you know, share little, little bits and pieces of your journey. And don't think that just because you said it once on Facebook that everybody heard it. Only, I don't know, 2%, four, 2 to 4% of your Facebook friends will actually see your post. So you have to keep telling that story. Just because you said it once doesn't mean that everybody heard it. Just because you said it five times doesn't mean that everybody heard it. Because you're going to keep adding to your network. And as your network grows, those people are going to be brand new and they might not have heard your story before. So there's always a way where you can say it. Somewhat, you know, a different piece of your story, a little bit of a background of your story. So how my story goes is when I graduated from college, I thought, all right, I would get a full-time job and live happily ever after. But once I started working six days a week, you know, 40 plus hours a week, I started gaining a lot of weight. Um, and being an athletic trainer, I wasn't very athletic. And that I felt ashamed of that, that I wasn't showing people what I was, t you know, I wasn't the person I was telling my athletes to be. I wasn't doing what I'm, I, I knew I should have done. Um, so I started gaining a lot of weight. I was just really unhappy, and I had that aha moment at a Super Bowl party. I was, you know, with a bunch of my friends, and there was all that crap around, like the pretzels with the dip and the chocolate and the cheese and the nachos and the chicken wings, and I ate it all. And 10 minutes later, I felt like crap. Literally, like my stomach felt awful, and I figured, you know, I hope I don't look how I feel. And I sat down on one of those high bar stools, and I looked down, and there was the infamous muffin top. And I was mortified. I was like, crap, I really do look how, look like how I feel. And I, I just wanted to run and hide. Like, there was no way I could, like, suck it in. But, you know, it was both. It was the physical appearance of it and also, like, just how I felt. I felt sick to my stomach. I was always exhausted. And at that moment, I just wanted to run and hide. And I knew, all right, this is it. I can't keep, you know, eating this crap because it's not doing anything good for me. It's just making me feel worse about myself. So my brother told me about this program called Insanity. And I actually knew it was going to be insane, but I can get it done in the morning in my five by five condo on the second floor because I didn't have time during the day. I was working six days a week. So that's what I did. I actually got it off of Amazon, which is a huge beach body no-no because you don't get any, any, any help. You don't get a coach. You don't get a challenge group. But I did the program anyways by myself, 60 days straight, and I lost 30 pounds. I was like, holy crap, this thing is for real. <laughs> like I'm a real person and I actually have abs now. You know, it's not somebody on TV that I'm saying, oh, they, they cropped that person or they did something to it. This is me. This thing is like for real. So I finally went on to teambeachbody.com because every single time you play it, you said you hear, go to teambeachbody.com and get your free coach. So I wanted to see what else I could do because I did not want to gain 30 pounds back because I've been a huge yo-yo dieter my entire life, up and down, 10 pounds here, gain it back. And I would do, you know, in the summer times, I would lose it. And then right when September started for school, for work, I would gain it all back. And then I'd be like, oh, it's okay. I'll just lose it in the summer again. And that is so detrimental to your body. And I know that. So I didn't want to gain those 30 pounds back. So I got a free coach, and her name was Lisa. I reached out to her, and I said, what else could I do to continue with my results? And she told me about another workout program called Turbo Fire. And then she mentioned um, about coaching to me since I got great results, since I love health and fitness, I love helping people. She said, you know, you can get a discount on all your stuff too. I think you'd be really good at this. And I thought, lady, you are crazy. I don't know who you are. I just kind of met you on the internet, kind of. Um, but in the back of my mind, I knew there was something else I needed to be doing with my life, something that was going to, you know, fuel me and something that I could do because I knew I was not making it until 65 
so I could retire and, and hope there's a pension later on. I just, you know, I was already burnt out after doing this for, you know, doing at my full-time job athletic training for, you know, six, seven years. I was burnt. So I said, you know, what the heck? All I have to lose is nothing, you know? If I get healthy and nobody buys anything from me, cool, I still win. It's a win-win situation. So I kind of just jumped all in and that's kind of how I got started with Beachbody. So that's my story. And I'm sure you guys have heard it a million times before. So I'm gonna open up the, the call to you guys. So you're gonna first talk about your why, why you're doing this, the deep down why, not just I wanna lose weight, but why do you want to, or what is that gonna do for your family? How is that gonna make you feel? What can you do once you reach that goal? Or what are your goals? Um, and then two, you're gonna tell your story. Even if it's not, even if you don't have a down pat, this is, this is all just to get you guys speaking it out loud. That way you can become comfortable. Yes, it's gonna be very uncomfortable talking about it right now, but nobody bites here, and I promise you, when it's done, you'll be like, oh, okay, I did it. And the next time, it'll be even better. So who's gonna be the brave soul to go first? I will. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess why, I mean, obviously I want to lose weight, but <laughs> I had done Insanity like two years ago. Um, I, two years ago I was diagnosed with depression and that, like that was the, like that was like my rock bottom. Like I went to school, I just graduated this past year. I went to school for criminology and psychology and I'm an adult mental health case manager. So I've studied all this time, like mental health and how to work with people who have mental illness and like how to cope with it and all that. Like I took, I did four years of schooling on this. And then um, in the middle of that, I didn't know what was happening to me. I didn't want to leave the house ever. Um, it was towards the end of summer. And at the time I was serving at Buffalo Wild Wings and I was giving up all my shifts just because I would get so anxious right before my shifts. I just didn't want to leave the house. Like I didn't want to do anything. Um, and I don't, I don't even know like how much I weighed at that time. Like it wasn't, I didn't start insanity at that time to, I mean, I did want to lose weight, but it was more for like my mental health because I was fighting with my roommates all the time because I didn't want to admit that like I had depression and I didn't want to go on medication just because, I mean, I'm on medication now, but I didn't want to have to like admit, okay, I need to be on meds for the rest of my life basically. Or however, like however long until it goes into remission. And it was just really hard just because I went to school for this. I didn't think that like it would be that hard if this was actually happening to me. Um, and I don't talk to the girls who I lived with. I lived with six other girls, which was a mistake to live with that many girls in one house. <laughs> um, but I don't talk to them anymore. Um, partially, I mean, our friendships ended because of I was I was going through a really hard time, and I take blame for that. But I was also betrayed in the middle of it too. Um, so. I moved in with my boyfriend and his, his five roommates. <laughs> so me and my cat packed up our stuff and went and moved with him. And I just was crying all the time. I had no idea what was going on. I was just down all the time. And I went to the doctor, which is when I was diagnosed with depression, but I didn't want to go on medications. So the doctor suggested exercising was probably my best bet. So I started exercising like crazy, like not an unhealthy amount, but like more than, I mean, I didn't exercise before. So I did the insanity program. Um, and I had awesome results. I was feeling great. It was awesome. And then like a month in, I didn't do the full 60 days. So I, I went like, probably like the middle of month two 
of the program, I stopped. Um, I was just really busy with school and I just was making all the excuses. And I eventually, I wasn't to the point in my depression that I was before, but it got to the point where I like needed to go on medications. And um, I don't know why I stopped exercising. I just kind of did. And I started eating bad again and not what, like just not paying attention to what I was eating. Um, and I, so, so recently I just like, I tried doing the 21 day fix a couple months ago. Um, but then I didn't stick to that. It's just been my problem. Like I sign up for something or I like try to do something and then I don't stick to it. Like I never stick to a healthy lifestyle or eating healthy. Um, it's kind of just been like the yo-yo dieting. Um, and then I, so I've just recently with my new job that I got, it's just been like, I've slowly started, I'm still on medication for my depression, which helps a lot. Like it's not anything what it used to be. I'm just not really happy in my job. It's not what I thought it would be. Um, and I just recently found out that my position is probably going to be done at the end of the year. So I was all excited to get this new job right out of high or right out of college. And now it's like ending already. And I haven't even been in it for like two months. Um, so I don't know. It's just kind of like slowly, my depression was slowly getting worse. So I just, I don't know when Jennifer talked to me and messaged me, I actually know Jennifer from like our, our moms used to be best friends when we were first born. So I've known her for a really long time. So it was a cool way to reconnect. And I just decided to do it and sign up for a coach right to be a coach right away. Just because I feel like that's the only thing that's going to keep me committed and keep myself accountable to actually stick to exercising and eating healthy. Um, I mean, I love how I feel after doing this for however long since June when I signed up. Um, it's definitely like a long process, but I, I don't know. I just like feel like this is the only thing that will keep me committed. And I don't want to go back to how I felt before. And that's kind of where I was heading. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Sorry, I don't really know how to like explain it very well. <laughs> no, that was great. That was good. I'm just trying to think of how I can give you feedback. So I would just say, write it down. Like write write it down of because um, I think when you tell your story, because you kind of mushed everything together. Yeah. <laughs> so kind of try and separate it. So talk about your story. You know, write your story down first of where you started, mm -hmm. you know, and how you got where you are. And then your why is kind of like where, where you're going, mm -hmm. where you want to go with this. Um, because everyone's gonna, you might say one thing that's going to click with somebody else, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, just writing it out and then just knowing what your why is. Cause I, I, I'm sure I, you know, I kind of got a glimpse of that, you know, you want to be happier. Yeah. You love how you feel after exercising. So it's emotional too. Mm -hmm. Um, and possibly you want this as a full-time job. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those, <laughs> those are like your whys, I think. Right. So I would write them out a little, and I'm sure, you know, in the beginning of um, the group, like we had you guys write out your whys. Um, mm -hmm. So just having that more concrete. Okay. Great job. Thanks. Yeah. And thanks for sharing that with us. I know it's weird sharing personal stuff with kind of quote unquote strangers. <laughs> um, but I think it's also good to get that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right, only two of you left. <laughs> I'll go. All right, Becky. Okay, so you want my story first or my why first? Either one, okay. Um, I guess I'll start with my story. Um, I've always struggled with weight. I was a 
huge athlete in high school. I was a jock. I was always in shape. I was never skinny. I was always extremely, you know, stocky and built and cut, but I was never out of shape. Um, I played soccer and I actually had um, a full ride to D1 uh, soccer in college until state semifinals of my senior year of college. Um, I completely blew my knee out in front of all of the coaches that were going to give me my full ride to the two colleges I was deciding on. And I lost that. And that's when my weight problems started. Um, I ended up playing in, high, in college for a little bit, but I had put on probably, it was, a, it was a nine and a half month recovery with my knee surgery, and I put on probably 120 pounds during that nine months. Um, I was in a wheelchair for five of them, so it was, a, it was a tough one, but that's where my weight problem started, and I was in college. Um, and then finally I quit playing soccer cause it just wasn't fun for me anymore. It wasn't comfortable. I wasn't having a good time. And, um, I decided I was going to work out and that's what I did. And I worked out and I lost 130 pounds and felt great for a long time. And then probably, probably five months later I got pregnant with my son and put on a hundred pounds. <laughs> So I had been yo-yoing and yo-yoing and yo-yoing. I had him and I dealt with postpartum depression, but I was too young to understand exactly what postpartum depression was. I was 20 years old. Um, and I just kept going with my life and going with my life. And finally, um, after our separation from his father and life in my own hands again, I started working out and doing what I normally do and eating well. and. I lost 110 pounds and I was back to going strong and being healthy and feeling good and looking good and um, started dating my now husband and um, got comfortable and started doing horrible things to my body, <laughs> eating bad, not working out, I even started smoking cigarettes um, and put it all back on again. And then we got pregnant with my daughter. And um, to be honest, since then, I have not been able to take off what I wanted to. And every time I, I start something and I try and I lose 60 pounds and then I give up. And a lot of it is mental. I am on, I am on uh, medication for depression now, and that helps some. But um, as I started to lose weight this last time, we found out we were pregnant with number three. and. Um, unexpectedly on birth control so that was fun and we had her and she's awesome and I'm so thankful but between having a third child and a really difficult middle child and a 12 year old that's involved in ice hockey I lived on fast food and Dunkin Donuts coffee for the entire winter and one day a couple months ago I looked in the mirror and hated myself I hated what I saw I hated what I felt Sorry. And I couldn't do anything with my kids anymore. And I got on the scale and I was 325 pounds. <laughs> and I just couldn't do it anymore. So that's my story. And my cousin is um, Kelly and she kind of saved me. So. That's that. So my health is my biggest why. My second biggest why is we're broke. <laughs> we have three kids and one plays ice hockey and we can't afford life anymore. And um, my husband works really hard and I don't want that anymore. I want, I want a happy, simple, healthy life. That's it. <laughs> Oh, no. Just like I was telling Chelsea, so many other people can relate to you. You're not alone in this. And I think you have big things coming for you. And obviously, you got the thing from Beachbody. What, today was it? You got the email? 
Yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. Like, that's awesome. So you're headed in the right direction and you have a lot of support behind you. <laughs> so that was excellent. Um, thank you for sharing. Sorry, I got so emotional. I'm an emotional hey, person. No. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the name of this, you know? It's not just like cut and dry. No. There are a lot of emotions behind this. And it's still a big wound. It's not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All right, Jesse, you're up. Um, give me a second. I really have to use the bathroom. <laughs> I drink so much water. Yo, I would totally buy from both of you. <laughs> you had good wives. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> sorry. No, it's totally don't be fine. Sorry. I really give you props for. Yo, I totally almost cried for both of you. I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> that's just like really something. I mean, I know that it's like hard to talk about, but that's like one of the that's something you can use to drive you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, totally. That's part of like, I feel like one of the biggest things, like I feel like I never stick to anything. So when I'm accountable for other people and people are watching me, like it's really fulfilling to feel like you are sticking to something. Mm -hmm. Right. I like get a lot of fulfillment out of that. So I, I feel like that's probably a lot of to do with how you guys feel too. So that's, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I feel like I can't give up because there's too many people watching now. <laughs> See, that's good. That's good. That's how. You, that's what I'm thinking too. <laughs> nope, never give up. I'm back. Okay. All right. So I'll go for it. Um, so I'll do the same thing. I'll start with my story, and then I'll I'll say kind. Of, you know, it'll it'll get there. So um, all of our stories really kind of remind me of each other. Like I was um a soccer player my whole life. I um, loved to play soccer. That was like my thing. My um, my sister, like I was always like the good student in school and my sister kind of always required my parents' help. Not in a terrible way, but they really devoted a lot of their attention to helping her. And my soccer was like, that's where I got my, my like attention and everything that I like, I felt really good about from them. Um, um, so, I, I really, really liked it. And um, I started having knee problems when I was 14. I, at this point in my life, I have had six ACL reconstructions on my right knee and one on my left knee. So I didn't get to play soccer. That was something that after my junior year of high school, I had to stop because I just kept re-tearing my knee. And it was kind of really hard for me because it was like just a big identifier of of myself and it was a big um a big way that I related to my family and stuff and my friends all my friends played and yeah I like became a manager and I would watch but it just wasn't the same and you feel really like out of it and kind of stupid like watching everybody get to do what you want to be doing so that was hard for me um I guess simultaneously um, I love my parents to death. They're happier than they've ever been together at this point in their life. But my whole life, they fought a very lot with each other, a very, 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 very lot with each other. And I guess I, I never realized it until I looked back, but I always had a boyfriend, always had a boyfriend since I was like 14 years old. I had a boyfriend for four years. Then I had a boyfriend, I had a boyfriend slash fiance for seven years. And when uh, my, me and my fiance ended up breaking up. Um, I jumped right into another relationship and I never really, um, let myself, I never show to anybody that I'm upset. I always like maintain the, the strong, I help my parents with their fights and I help them manage their money. And I help my sister with her school and make sure that she's okay and gets through college and gets her job. And at that point, when me and my fiance had broke up, my parents, we had moved out, me and my sister, and my parents were kind of doing well. They didn't really need my help so much anymore. And my sister had met her husband, and she didn't really need my help anymore. And me and my fiance had broken up, and I kind of was always with him. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, 
what do I do now? Like, I, I have no idea. I had just graduated graduate school. I was a school psychologist. Um, I was waiting on a job that was supposed to be coming. I was um, starting to date my new boyfriend. And I was kind of just a mess. I, um, I don't remember doing it. And it, it doesn't seem like all that much. But I put on, like, I want to say, like, probably 30, 35 pounds. And I'm tall, so it doesn't really always show as much. But I felt it. None of my clothes fit. I looked in the mirror, and I just didn't, like, and I guess I always struggled with self-esteem. So maybe I wasn't, like, extremely overweight but I was I had no confidence no confidence I don't know why or where it happened in my life but I always got my confidence from my boyfriend and I was with some new guy and I was overweight and I was like I feel less confident than I ever did in my entire life um and I felt horrible about it and so I started my job and it wasn't really what I intended it to be. It was a lot more paperwork and a lot less helping people. Um, I work in Jersey city. It's a very urban area. So I felt like a lot of the efforts that I made with kids in school, they would just go home to families that were doing drugs and they weren't like, I, I couldn't really, really help them even if I tried. And I just felt very, very, very unfulfilled. I wasn't helping anybody. And I guess, I really, I didn't realize it, but I really get a lot of fulfillment out of helping people and feel, maybe it's feeling important or feeling like I'm making a difference. Um, and I was doing none of that in any part of my life. And so um, fast forward, uh, me and my bad boyfriend were together for about a year and a half and we broke up and I, it was coming, but I lost it. I like lost it. I think it was um, a combination of the fiance that I broke with, up with that I never really thought about or tried to even think about. I still try not to think about him because it just makes me sad. Um, then he broke up with me. My, my boyfriend broke up with me and I was just absolutely devastated. I was like, we are, we're living together. So we separated. Um, I was stayed with my parents for a little while, but I was miserable. I was like, I don't want to like make anyone see me like this because no one can help me right now. And they, um, just looking at them, they just felt like sorry for me. And it just made me feel even worse. I'm like, Oh my God, I need to do something. I lost a ton of weight, but I, I was working out. I was doing CrossFit, but I also wasn't eating. I was like, I had like a, a diet of wine and like CrossFit and that was it. And I looked great, which was awesome, but I wasn't healthy and I didn't feel good. Um, so fast forward again, me and that boyfriend actually got back together. Um, and I feel really good about that, but, um, we don't have the same relationship that we did. And I'm kind of glad for that. Um, I don't need to rely on him for, I mean, he doesn't let me rely on him for, for my, my confidence. Like he'll compliment me, but it's not unhealthy. And I think in the past it had been unhealthy and the boys I was with were great people, but they definitely enabled me. Um, so he doesn't really put up with my shit. And, um, so I kind of feel this feeling like I need more, like, I need more out of my job. I need to be helping someone. I need to feel fulfillment from something. I feel fulfillment from my dogs. I feel fulfillment from, you know, good parts of my relationship, but I need something that's just like mine, like something that I can, um, I don't know, that I can be proud of, that I can um, say like, look, this is what I do. I get it done. Um, I'm good at it. Like I used to feel with soccer, or like I used to feel with um, school, like I was good at school, like right now in my life, I'm like, what is it that I'm really that great at? So I kind of feel like I want to have something that's mine and that I'm good at and I wanna help other people because I really like that feeling of going out of my way and seeing other people succeed. And maybe it's like selfish, I don't know, but it makes me feel really, really good to know that I've helped someone and they say like, whoa, dude, you helped me. And that makes me feel really good. So I would like to just, continue to do that. Um, I really like the experience so far. I just wish that I could help more people. Um, and that's the story to lead me to where I am and why I'm doing it. And 
what what else I could get out of it other than the personal fulfillment is I'd love to pay off my student loans so that I could not have the money problems I watched my parents have so that I could have just a good easy life with get married and not feel the pressure of debt and the pressure of not being able to do things or afford things, simple things, not like I don't want a Ferrari. I just want, you know, something that I like. Um, so yeah, financial freedom. Um, I don't know if I ever see myself doing it full time. I, I, I can't see that yet. Maybe one day it seems like it would be really awesome when I see Rose. Um, but just to get out, I have $100,000 of student debt loan. It would just be really nice not to have that sitting on my shoulders and be able to put a down payment on a house or something. Um, that would be awesome. So that's my story and my why. Great. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> you will definitely come. You know, when, once everyone starts sharing these stories, like, you know, little bit, bits and pieces here and there, people are going to start to relate to you guys. And that's going to kind of open up people to want to reach out to you and message you. Like people are going to come out of the woodworks and I'm sure they, you know, might have gotten people that have surprised you. Um, Cause they're going to be able to relate to you and say, I know exactly how she feels. So the whole point of doing this was so you can kind of get it out. Um, and letting people know about it, you know, just kind of like everything that we do as coaches, if we do it behind closed doors, no one, no one can see it. No one can see the transformation happening. And that was a big mistake I made just like my before and after pictures. I never had a before picture because I didn't want to take one. And everyone's like, Oh, you already this or that. And I'm like, no, I really wasn't. I just didn't want to take pictures because I was so embarrassed. But even I think what's more so important besides the transformational is the emotional, you know, how you feel now to how you want to be feeling and sharing that. Cause I think that's what a, a big thing that people are missing nowadays. Cause we're all kind of taught that go to school and get a full-time career or, you know, be a mom. And, and that I don't like, for me, it was just like, okay, and then what do I do? Just hang out until whenever. Um, but showing that, so sh showing that story and sharing all those, those things that you're going through, whether, you know, it's a bad day. Like I know I say like, you know, you want to be posting positive things on Facebook, but you know, we all struggle. And I think, you know, sharing your struggles and being real is also important, but then taking a look at saying, okay, how can I turn that negative into a positive? You know, how can you say, you know, whatever happened to me, but I learned dot, dot, dot. So always try and put that like positive spin on where, all right, this sucked, but I learned or I felt better by, you know, doing my workout or just, you know, having a good talk with my mom or whatever it is. Um, so I hope that was helpful for you guys just to kind of get that out there. Um, I know you probably already have shared your story kind of on Facebook a little bit, but that's going to be kind of our um, homework assignment. I don't like saying homework assignment because whatever. But um, so really write this down of, you know, write your story down, write your why down, and just pick either or what you want to post on Facebook. Um, I would say go with your story just because a lot more people are going to be able to just relate to that. And you don't have to make it about each body and you don't have to tell your whole story. So when you write it out, just pick like one point that you kind of want to pinpoint on and how you want to better yourself or how it's already changed. So, you know, just like when you're reading a book or whatever, like, you know, you have that the first couple of paragraphs are gonna kind of, you know, draw you in, something that's gonna be eye-catching. And then at the end, you're gonna kind of turn around to say, okay, and this is what I did about it, or this is what I'm going to do about it. This is how I'm gonna improve. So come up with that, um, what is today, Tuesday? I mean, I would say have this be a post for like Sunday or next Monday. That way you guys aren't like, you know, I don't want you guys feeling rushed doing it. 
but just to kind of get everything written out on paper and then, you know, post it in the group and then we can kind of help each other. Um, I can guide, kind of guide you guys on exactly, you know, what to say or how to reword things. Because I think in the beginning how I was telling you, Becky, um, like when you look at other coaches, like some coaches are so good at just like being a storyteller. And that's what this really is about, like being a storyteller and getting people to hear your story and relate to you in that, in that way. I'm absolutely horrible at writing things, but I, that's how I, I do it. I look at the top, you know, top coaches or just coaches that I like, and I see how they just worded it. And then I just take it and kind of insert my story instead because it's different, but I can still kind of use that, the, the phrases or the paragraphs that they use or just the, the flow of it. You know, what did they say first? How did they do it? How do they end it? And kind of stick my story in there. So thanks everyone for being on tonight. I know this one was a little bit long, but um, any questions before we close out? Any questions, comments? Could you possibly send me a message with a couple of those names of those people you follow? I know one was Anita. I didn't write it down in time. Okay, I'll post it in the group so everybody can. Okay. Yeah, that would be I'll, awesome. Sure. No problem. Thank you. Welcome. I'm good. Thank you. Well, you're welcome, Jesse. I'm good. Thanks. No problem. Thanks, girls, for sharing. Um, I know it's really hard to, like, talk on video it's kind of weird uh, <laughs> this also helps you leadership wise because hopefully one day all of you will have your own teams and you'll be running this by yourself um no worries. not yet not yet you'll get there um but it's a good step in the direction so everyone have a good night and i'll see you in the page and we'll probably do this um next time next week same day same time awesome <laughs> thank you so much guys yeah thank you bye bye, bye.